Get ready for some of the worst calls of the 2023 NFL season. I have gathered a total of over 75 controversial calls and many you have not seen yet. From ghost calls to non-calls to even badly re-reviewed calls where the refs double checked it or discussed it over and still somehow got it wrong. You have to see these as it will make you question the integrity of the entire NFL. Now this is part two of my first viral video on controversial calls from the first half of the season. This second video covers the second half of the 2023 NFL season, so buckle up as it only gets worse and we've more than doubled the amount of calls just for your viewing pleasure. Now many of these calls are self-explanatory, but I will provide commentary on calls that I think may be a little confusing or need some further explanation. However, many calls, I'll just let the video do the talking. And remember, this is 2024. You can bet on many other things than who wins and loses. I only say this because I get a lot of comments, oh, it can't be rigged, they have the same number of penalties, they have the same number of penalty yards. But remember, you don't just have to bet on the outcome. You can bet on the point spread, point total, first half, second half, player props, game props, real-time betting when the odds get ridiculous and more so when you see bad calls on both teams just remember it can still absolutely be rigged it all just depends on what they were betting on for example a ref could easily bet on one team in the first half and the opposing team in the second half essentially winning both bets and making it seem like they called bad plays on both teams they could rig it with player props and bet the under on your favorite playmakers essentially rigging the game by taking out your star wide receiver and would put your team at a huge disadvantage while still making other calls on the opposing team that don't affect their player prop. However, let's get into it. And you tell us in the comments whether you think the game was rigged, especially after possibly the worst season of all time for officiating. Also, feel free to watch any of my other officiating videos on my channel and remember to like and subscribe for more easy to digest sports videos. Let's start with the badly reviewed call section as these may be the most egregious since the refs had a chance to review the video evidence in slow motion or had a long discussion with other officials and still somehow got the call wrong. It seems almost impossible but somehow refs found a way to justify terrible calls. Let's go number one. We have a punt with two minutes left in the second quarter, so big play as it will determine the momentum for what could be the final drive going into the half. Packers player clearly waves his hand for a fair catch and refs get it right and throw a flag. But wait, refs start discussing it and come back and say there was actually no foul on the play literally makes no sense as one of the officials must have saw the fair catch since they thrown the flag and if they were actually watching at all they would have known that it was a fair catch number two this one warrants some explanation as it's a little complicated and was one of the most viral calls of the season you may remember it it was the two-point attempt for the win in the lions cowboys game Seems successful at first until a late foul call comes in by the refs saying the receiver never declared el eligible before the play. Basically, a lineman has to declare himself eligible so the defense can note that he is available for a pass. Lions should have won until the officials started colluding and they come back and say he never declared himself so doesn't count. Not sure why the lady ref is also involved here since she wasn't the official that the Lions player would have reported himself to. Not saying anything, but she's been on a lot of controversial calls this season. If you don't believe me, watch my Brad Allen video. Brad Allen was allegedly even removed from the playoffs because of this very play. Lions coaches and players are absolutely livid as it doesn't seem real. So let's just say this foul makes sense. But later we got video footage of the Lions player declaring himself before the play and Brad Allen totally disregarding it and going along with this foul. The team also would have practiced this type of trick play all week. So for the player not to declare himself is laughable and the video evidence shows it as well. Number three, on an important third down, we get a potential catch for the Seahawks and it does look 50-50. So officials call it incomplete. 
Understandable, as it was hard to tell. No one blaming the refs here. However, Seattle disagrees and challenges the ruling of the catch. So now we will get a chance to see it in slow motion and really prove whether it was a catch or not. You can see the captions of the TV analyst and video replay clearly showing that it is actually a completed catch. He gets his arms under the ball. However, refs seeing this one on review somehow still rule it incomplete. Pretty fishy if you ask me. Number four, catch in the backfield turns into a fumble by the Broncos, which then becomes a pileup for the ball and hard to see who got it. Patriots appear to come up with the ball, so ruled in favor of the Patriots. Again, completely understandable as it was hard to tell. But it is reviewed and video evidence and TV captions are in agreement that the Broncos actually secured the ball and were down before the Patriots got to the ball themselves. However, refs seeing this, seeing the slow motion replay, still rule it in the Patriots' favor. Very weird. Not sure how they did that and seems rigged to come away with that opinion on slow motion review. Number 5. Touchdown pass for the Jaguars here with 3 minutes left in the 4th quarter. So big play here. Official is mere feet from the catch and was looking at it the whole time, but rules it incomplete. This is understood as again it was hard to tell if he made possession at full speed. But let's go to review. The video and TV captions confirm that the receiver did have possession and was inbounds to complete the catch. The officials, upon seeing these slow motion replays, still rule it incomplete. Wow, just wow. How do they mess up this slow motion replay? Literally makes no sense. Let's move on to non-calls. A lot of these I won't comment on because they are completely self-explanatory and the video proves it. However, I will pop in for a lot of them that still warrant some explanation, so here we go. Number 8. This one is crazy. One minute left in the first half. Big play. Close game between two playoff potential teams. This one also went viral because not only was this a clear horse collar feet in front of an official who was staring the play down the whole time, but they also had a ghost call on top of it to add insult to injury. So again, clear horse collar right in front of the ref with no call. Jersey is evidently torn from the horse collar, Josh Allen complains, and the officials do throw a late flag, but not what you think. The officials throw a flag on the intentional grounding, as Allen released the ball before getting sacked. Okay, let's take a look. Oh man, that's wrong too, because there was a Bills receiver in the area, as you can see in the video footage. They messed up twice on this one play. And don't say the officials couldn't have come back and say there was no foul or corrected it for intentional grounding or that there was a late flag for a horse collar because they do that type of stuff all the time as we just saw with the badly re-reviewed section. They can throw a flag and then pick it up and say there was actually no foul on the play. But they just pick and choose when they want to correct themselves. And this time they chose to screw the bills twice on the same play even after you could clearly see Allen's jersey completely torn and a receiver in the area of the intentional grounding. Ridiculous. I did a full breakdown on the officiating of this game because it was highly questionable, so if you want further explanation and a deep dive into this game alone, check out this video.
Number 11 is wild because they almost get into a fight over this non-call. Basically, Eagles number 51 almost seismic tosses the Bills player on his head, which could have led to a concussion. You can see the Eagles hand holding onto the Bills shoulder pad as he's coming down, which could have been called for holding along with unnecessary roughness after the play had ended as his arm and hand were completely wrapped around the back of the body of the Bills player. No call though. Next one, number 12. This one is notable too because it was in overtime. So huge play. Clear pass interference right in front of an official. No call. And you can see a bunch of terrible no calls in the same game that went against the Bills. Hmm, seems suspicious. Let's keep moving on though. Number 13 was a designed run by the Bills to keep the clock going and stay in bounds in the fourth quarter with about two minutes left. This one was on Josh Allen. Josh Allen clearly is out of bounds by his hand before being down. Big play. This should have stopped the clock and was in clear view of an official. Refs didn't see it that way though as they were feet away and somehow kept the clock going. Number 14, clear face mask with about five minutes left in the fourth quarter. Big no call that helped the Jaguars in a close game. Multiple officials staring right at the ball carry the whole time. Head clearly turned indicating a face mask. No laundry on the field. Wonder why. Number 18, clear offsides on the Texans. Check it out. Number 20, another clear offsides on the Texans on fourth down with one minute left to decide the game. Many bad calls in favor of the Texans in this game. Like how are you not calling multiple offsides even? They usually only allow that for the Chiefs. And you'll see why I brought up the Chiefs in later plays in this video. Here we go, number 22, offsides on the Chiefs in the fourth quarter in a very close game, not called.
Number 24, two minutes left in the fourth, still a close game. Chiefs get the sack, but what do you know, another offsize that could have given the Bengals a first down instead. Not called. Now you know why Mahomes was complaining about getting an offsides call post-game that one time, where his post-game interview went viral. It's because they usually let the Chiefs get away with it constantly. So Mahomes was surprised they actually got called for it for once. Number 27, another pass interference missed in clear view of the officials. That's why many say this game was rigged other than the viral two-point conversion call. They were favoring Dallas all game. There still were more bad calls in this game, so stay tuned. Number 30, third down with 30 seconds left in the fourth. Giants driving in a one possession game. Easy pass interference call in front of the officials. Not called. Weird how that happens when the game matters the most. Number 33, officials must have bet Broncos in this game because how do you not call the offsides? He's almost past the first down marker. It's so bad. Mere feet in front of the ref. Number 34, feet away from the official staring it down the whole time with about two minutes left in the second half. Another huge play, no call. These non-calls affect the game so much just as much as bad penalties do. Number 36, in overtime, third down, couldn't be more of a bigger play. Easy pass interference or holding right in front of the official. Nope, no call. No laundry on the field for this one. Interesting. Number 37, Bengals were mad, no intentional grounding on this play. Could have easily been called. We've seen worse called for intentional grounding, as a lot of our plays previously. But a lot of the calls or no calls went in favor of the Vikings this game. Coincidence? Comment below. Number 38, overtime, third down, big play. TV analysts agree in the caption should have been offensive pass interference right in view of the official. Another no call. Interesting. I've noticed Hopkins gets away with a decent amount of offensive pass interference calls. 
Stay tuned for another egregious one on Hopkins. Number 39. One minute left in the fourth. Could have decided the game. Again, right in clear view of the ball carrier and official. Easy late hit, but no call. Titans player is livid. Doesn't make any sense why this was not called. Absolutely inexcusable. Number 40, on fourth down with about five minutes left in the first half. An open field for view of multiple officials. Should have been a holding call in the red zone that would have turned it into a field goal. But no call. Browns first down. And the chains keep moving. This is how much officials can affect the outcome of the game. Number 41. The next series of plays is absolutely nuts, as officials were determined not to let the Broncos have a TD. Big red zone play late in the third quarter. In my opinion, should have been a touchdown, but was ruled short. They should have ruled it a touchdown either way since it was so close and then it would have been an automatic review. But all right, let's say it was short. They rule it short. Let's let this one slide and move on to the next play. Third down. Looks like the ball crosses the goal line. Nope, ruled short again. Wow, right in view of the official. You know what? Let's agree to disagree and give the officials the benefit of the doubt and move on to the next play. All right, here we go. Fourth and inches on the goal line. Easy TD, right? They can finally punch it through. Wrong. Flag magically appears as he crosses the goal line for offsides. What a coincidence. Look at the captions. The TV analysts can't even believe it themselves. They don't even see any offsides, and I don't either. That's nuts. Makes absolutely zero sense, and the officials need to be investigated for this series of plays. If you don't believe the NFL is rigged by now after watching that, then I have a bridge in Brooklyn to sell you. Number 44, seconds left in the first half. Another offensive pass interference on Hopkins. This was the second one I was talking about previously. No call, an open field view of multiple officials. Let me know what you think in the comments. Number 45, check this one out. We also get a roughing the passer here that wasn't called. Roughing the passer was probably the most controversial call all season that could go either way, depending on how the official was feeling that day. This one wasn't called and the TV analysts are baffled by it. Number 46, another easy horse collar here on the Titans right in front of an official that seemed to even injure Tyreek Hill as well. This could actually be considered a hip drop tackle too as he rolls up on Tyreek's ankle. Something that was just outlawed in the NFL in the 2024 offseason. No call though, a lot of favorable calls going in the way of the Titans this game. Awfully suspect in my opinion. Number 47, another one in favor of the Titans. Easy defenseless receiver call in open field but no flags came out. A lot of people mentioned that the Dolphins get some of the worst officiating because there is a gripe between the Dolphins ownership and Roger Goodell. Comment what you think as the video evidence against the Titans clearly shows some bias. And we saw bias in the Dolphins Eagles game as well. If you don't believe me, I have a video on that game too. Check it out. It was egregious. Number 48 should have been an easy offsides call here on third down in the fourth quarter. But why call it? Nothing matters at this point. Officials let it slide and turns into a touchdown pass in a close game. Let's just let anything go at this point, seems like. Number 49, tie ball game with two minutes left in the fourth. Another blatant pass interference call on the Chiefs right in front of the officials in open field, no call. He was literally yanking on Diggs's arm mere feet from an official. The 2023 Chiefs season is literally questionable in my opinion. They don't even call them for offsides 
and now this nfl wanted that taylor swift super bowl money let me know what you think in the comments number 50 these next two are crazy should have easily been too safe officials inches away and calls it short he was literally tackled in the end zone with one foot on the goal line makes no sense Officials must have bet no defensive scores or low point total in this game or something. Because that is wild back-to-back -back, no call officiating on two easy safeties. Number 54, seconds left in the first half in the red zone and the Steelers literally got away with a punch to the Browns receiver in the face on this one. Insanity. I can't believe they allowed a punch to the face in the game in favor of the Steelers. Let's move on to the ghost call section now. This is where they just make up fouls that never actually happen. These get crazy to say the least. So pay attention to the end because it just gets worse and worse. Number 56, third down in the fourth quarter and they call a roughing the passer when the ball barely left Carr's hand. Like are sacks and all QB hits illegal now? The ball literally didn't even leave his hand, but somehow that's a roughing the passer. Usually it's more than two steps and then they'll call it. But who knows with this one. Number 57, third down in that Vikings game we saw previously with a lot of no calls that went in favor of the Vikings. Here's another one. They call a holding on the lines on this one, but pay attention to the captions. Even the TV analysts are struggling to see the holding call. Vikings get away with another call on third down in their favor. Number 58, fourth quarter, second down, and they call an unnecessary roughness. But check the replay. The dude barely even touches him. Call Ghostbusters, I don't know. There must have actually been a ghost on the field for this one, because I don't see much contact. Number 60, another one in favor of the Chiefs in that same egregious Bengals game. They call an intentional grounding in the fourth quarter when there was clearly a Bengals receiver in the area. Imagine trying to get a drive and momentum going when they start you off with an intentional grounding call that makes no sense. That's how officials can easily change the outcome of a close game with one call. Burrow is just rolling his eyes at this point. You gotta give them credit for even keeping it close in this game. Number 61, one minute left before the half. On the kick return, they call a horse caller. Check the replay though. This one's pretty funny in my opinion. It was such a ghost call. Number 62, look at the captions for this one. They called illegal contact on number 18 for what appeared to be jumping. I honestly could see this one being called on number 91 for holding the center down. To my knowledge, they called it on number 18 
but let me know what y'all think in the comments. Number 63, this is another one from that infamous Cowboys-Lions game. They called a tripping on Dallas when it was actually the Lions player Hutchinson that stuck his foot out. Here's another angle of it as well. As you can see, Hutchinson is clearly sticking his leg out, causing the tripping call, but somehow they call it on Dallas. Number 64, Eagles-Giants seconds before the half on second and goal. This one is crazy because Jalen Hurts actually messes up and was supposed to step out to stop the clock. For some reason, he doesn't though and jukes back in and gets tackled inbounds making a huge mistake and the clock should have kept going. It also looks like he potentially fumbles at the end of the play. Understandably, Giants try to secure the ball, but the refs throw a flag saying delay of game essentially covering up Hertz's mistake and stopping the clock for him. This gave the Eagles a huge advantage right before the half and another shot at the end zone. The Giants coach is starting to think something is up with the look on his face. Check it out. Number 65. Same game, another flag that should have been called on the Eagles for offsides. Even Carter on the Eagles. Looks like he knows he messed up. This is on a 4th and 4 too in the 3rd quarter. So huge play. Could have given the Giants the first down. Instead the officials call it on the Giants when the Giants never even flinched. Another huge call in favor of the Eagles. At this point the Giants coach knows something is fishy and is understandably screaming his head off. Number 66. Fourth quarter, check this one out. Official was feet away in clear view, but there doesn't appear to be any pass interference. Comment what you think on this one below. Number 67, this is one where you scratch your head and wonder if we are even playing football anymore or are even allowed to hit or tackle. They called an unnecessary roughness for this hit and he was still in bounds, clearly. Even the TV analysts are wondering what the flag was for. Number 68, another call in favor of the Chiefs in a close game in the third quarter especially since this turned into a fumble turnover. They called a holding when there was barely any contact. Another weird one in favor of the Chiefs. Look at the penalty yards too for the game at that point. 50 penalty yards for the Patriots and only 15 against the Chiefs in a close game. And still the Patriots are keeping it close. Number 69. Here we get an unnecessary roughness call on a great textbook tackle on 3rd and 22. Which I think gives the Giants a first down. Correct me if I'm wrong. Crazy they called that. And tough to be a defender anymore after seeing something like this. Like it's going to create hesitation on any tackle which will give the offense a huge advantage. The TV ref Dean Blandino agrees with this as well. The NFL is slowly turning into the NBA and look how that turned out for ratings. Number 70, here we got a great run on a punt in the third quarter. It looks like they even could have called a late hit on the Seahawks at the end of this play. But instead, the officials call a hit below the waist on the 49ers when it appeared the 49ers player just slipped. 31 on the Seahawks looked around like he even got away with one. It's clearly obvious. Number 71, looks like a clear offensive pass interference on what could have been an interception with a minute left in the second quarter. But nope, the officials don't see it that way. Somehow it was a defensive pass interference. Please someone explain that to me in the comments. The Colts coach is absolutely livid.
Number 72. Here's another one in favor of the Bengals in the same game. On a TD run, no less. Officials call it back for offensive holding on number 56. Let's check the replay though, because even the TV analysts in the captions are confused by this one. Looks pretty clean to me. Number 73 is hilarious. About a minute left in the first half. See if you can spot any defensive pass interference. Completely wipes away the first and 20 in favor of the Ravens going into the half with even more points on the board. Number 74, another one from the same game. This one looked pretty clean to me and it wiped away a TD screen pass in favor of the Bengals. Let me know what y'all think about this one. Lamar is absolutely pissed. Number 75, last one. This one is pretty funny. They called an unnecessary roughness foul on the Carolinas, number 68. It looked like he didn't even do much. If anything, it was more on the Packers towards number 79 on Carolina, where he falls back. This one is in the fourth quarter, too, in a potentially still close game. But let me know what y'all think in the comments. Just funny, they called it on number 68 when he barely didn't even do anything. Nevertheless, called it on Carolina versus the Packers. Remember to like and subscribe as it takes a lot of work putting these videos together in hopes of keeping the NFL honest and not seeing our game turn into the NBA. Let me know your favorite worst calls and feel free to watch part one as it had some even more ridiculous calls. Thanks for watching.